Welcome everyone. Today I'm taking a look at The Big Operator from 1959, directed by Charles F. Haas. Recycling? Hey, that's not a new thing at all. Movie studios were recycling long before those yellow or blue containers started appearing in our neighborhoods years ago. In 1959, MGM decided to do a little recycling of its own, revisiting a story by Paul Gallico, who also wrote the source novel for The Poseidon Adventure. Gallico's story had been filmed in 1942 as Joe Smith, American, starring Robert Young. In that film, Young plays Joe Smith, the crew chief on a Lockheed assembly line in a defense plant during World War II. Joe's boss, along with two men from Washington, ask Joe to work on a top secret project. Later, another group of men try to strong arm Joe into coughing up the plans. Otherwise, his wife, played by Marsha Hunt, and son, played by Daryl Hickman, will disappear. Joe Smith, American, made a modest profit, which is all the inspiration producer Albert Zug Smith needed to cook up a remake. Zug Smith wasn't exactly the king of great ideas, but this one wasn't bad. Instead of a wartime patriotism film set at a defense plant, set the story around a labor union dispute at a factory, and hire Mickey Rooney as Little Joe Braun, a vicious racketeering union leader. The film opens with Braun having a man murdered, I will not disclose how, by a hitman, Oscar the Executioner Wetzel, played by Ray Danton. When Braun and Wetzel meet to discuss the aftermath of the hit, factory co-workers and buddies Bill Gibson, played by Steve Cochran, and Fred McAfee, played by Mel Torme, witness the meeting, and Braun witnesses them. Braun attempts to entice both Bill and Fred to come work for him, where he can keep an eye on them, really to make sure they don't get any ideas about talking to the cops. When Braun pays a visit to Bill's modest house, the contrast between Cochran, standing six feet tall, and Rooney, at 5'2", is laughable, until Bill sits down and Braun remains standing, towering over Bill. It's no longer funny. It's frightening. Here's Braun, a small fry, not only intimidating Bill in his own home, but also spouting innuendos about what he'd like to do with Bill's wife, Mary, played by Mamie Van Doren, in what has to be the most modest role she ever played. Rooney chews his cigar and the scenery with the best of them, but he's also very believable as a blisteringly savage Jimmy Hoffa-type labor boss. Rooney had been dipping his toe into the darker stuff for quite some time with films like Quicksand, Drive a Crooked Road, Babyface Nelson, and The Last Mile. But if you weren't paying attention to those films, his portrayal of Braun was likely a big surprise. This ain't no Andy Hardy picture, kids. Steve Cochran is another matter. He didn't get the chance to play many good guys, so it's a bit strange seeing him as an honorable character. Cochran's no wimp here, but we're used to seeing him slug somebody at least once a reel. It takes some getting used to, but it's refreshing to see Cochran as a regular Joe who simply enjoys his work and wants to protect his family. It's also nice to see Mamie Van Doren playing a character who's not a sex pot. She really isn't given much to do here, but she does okay. The film also features Jim Backus, Jackie Coogan, Vampira, and a pre-Dennis the Menace Jay North without bleached blonde hair. Although it's a mixed bag and believability is stretched to the absolute limit during the last act, the Big Operator is a solid crime picture you just can't stop watching. I'm not convinced it can truly be called a film noir, but I wouldn't argue the point either. The amount of violence, at least for 1959, is a bit shocking. I still can't get over the fact that a man is set on fire in an MGM production. 
and a later torture session is particularly intense. The movie includes most of the cast and crew of another picture released by MGM one month earlier, The Beat Generation, a title often lambasted and probably for good reason. The Big Operator is on Blu-ray from Olive Films, released in 2014, and looks pretty good in CinemaScope. The Van Alexander score is a bit overblown, but that's not uncommon for the era. The release contains zero extras, but is currently on sale at Hamilton Book for six bucks. I think it's worth a look. If you've seen the film, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.